In this episode of American Greed, Jacob Kingston is a high-ranking member of the Order, the most powerful religious sect you've never heard of. I want to start by bearing my testimony that this is the work of the Lord. The feds say the Order controls an empire of hundreds of businesses throughout the American West, allegedly worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Most of the members believe that they work hard to make money for the Order because God's army is going to need to be well-funded when Jesus comes. But this deep-pocketed holy man has a surprising partner, a shady fuel baron who calls himself the Lion. He's this very flashy figure, dresses in very expensive clothes, throws lavish parties, drives fancy cars. The polygamist and the lion steal millions from the government in a biofuel scheme until they are met by another unlikely combo, tenacious federal agents and a teenaged girl. My dad has over 300 kids. Tonight, an insider determined to break away from the order and expose the truth. I knew that this was my chance to get out and I had to take it and I couldn't look back. She is privy to all the transactions that happen within the order. He started explaining that all these businesses are connected and all these people are connected. They're all part of this cult. Member of a fundamentalist polygamist sect, a guy with three wives and 20 children, teams up with an immigrant from Armenia to steal $500 million from the federal government. Doesn't get any more American than that. On a cold morning just before dawn, 17-year-old Mary Jacobs gets up and dressed while her family sleeps. Today is the day she decides to change her life forever. I remember getting up that morning knowing that I was gonna leave the order. Mary Jacobs is escaping from her parents, who would have her engaged to marry her first cousin in two days. The order believes in incestuous relationships to keep their bloodline pure. It's something that you grow up knowing you're going to be married to somebody in the family. Working in the Order's accounting office, Mary knows where the financial bodies are buried and holds key information that could help to expose their secretive family's alleged crimes. And I remember when she came to me and she said, OK, I'm ready. I said, great, let's go right now. Let's contact the FBI. In the suburbs of Salt Lake City, the streets are clean, the houses well kept, and the neighbors are friendly. It's also home to what has been called the most powerful polygamist group in America, the Order, also known as the Kingston Group and officially the Davis County Cooperative Society. It's estimated 3,500 to 5,000 members live in the Salt Lake Valley, blending into the suburbs in family homes with minivans in the driveway. They don't live in compounds. They live in regular neighborhoods. They work regular jobs. They dress in regular clothes. You know, they appear uh, outwardly like just regular, ordinary folks. The sect was founded in 1935 by a man named Charles Eldon Kingston. Today, seven brothers in the Kingston line run the group. Their supreme leader is brother Paul Kingston. See that standard in the gospel is here. In 1995, Mary Jacobs is born into the order. Her father, David Kingston, is one of these seven brothers. Her mother is his half-sister, married in the order at age 15. My mom was a fifth wife to David Kingston. He currently has 17 wives. I am one of 15 children to my mom. And my dad has over 300 kids in the Salt Lake Valley, and he's just one person in the order. And the idea is they are organizing this kingdom of God on Earth under the order of heaven. 
and it is very orderly. It's very number-based, so the men are ordered by number. Their wives are attached to them by number, and it's almost like the group sees themselves as God's accounting system. A numbered man in the order is somebody who signs away everything that they will ever make into the order. They believe it's like a way to get into heaven. Over the last 100 years, the group's members create an empire of businesses and real estate throughout the American West. They have many million dollar businesses. They have security companies. You've got coin and laundry businesses, ice companies, pawn shops. And the idea is you build up these businesses for the greater good to restore wealth. In addition to polygamy, the order practices the voluntary consecration of wealth, where all businesses and all money is shared with the group. Former member Michelle Michaels explains the order's teaching. If a child finds a penny on the ground, the first thing that he should want to do is turn it into the church, turn it into the order. He shouldn't even think about spending that penny until after it goes to the order bank. The order bank is what members call their internal system that keeps track of income and spending for order members. Mary Jacobs has been working at the order's financial office since she was a child. From the time I was seven years old, I was preparing these financial statements for every single member of the order. All of the transactions and anything that an order member spends is recorded on those statements. And then as I got older, I started preparing the business financials. And then I started helping prepare their taxes for their different businesses. Mary's older first cousin, Jacob Kingston, also grows up in the order and into this culture of creating wealth and prosperity for his people. Jacob is a favored son. And before long, his formal portrait joins the others amongst the ranks of the numbered men. He is number 95. I want to start by bearing my testimony that this is the work of the Lord and that uh, Brother Paul is the man on the wash tower. Jacob Kingston is one of the grandsons of one of the founders of the sect, the Kingston Group. And according to their own beliefs, that means that his bloodline goes directly back to Jesus Christ himself. So he's sort of been a, a bit of a prince of the Kingston group ever since he was born. And when he's 17, Jacob decides to get married to his sweetheart, Sally. As a good polygamist, Jacob takes other wives and eventually winds up with a total of three wives and around 20 children of his own. In the early 2000s, Jacob enrolls in a doctoral program in mechanical engineering and begins to develop a new business idea for the order turning French fry grease into diesel fuel. To foster green energy, the U.S. government pours billions into biofuels in the form of tax credits. It works out to roughly on the order of $2 a gallon straight from the federal government just for having made this stuff. And then you get to sell the stuff and make whatever you make. Jacob Kingston sets up a biodiesel refinery on his father's ranch in northern Utah. And by 2008, the Washakie Renewable Energy Facility begins importing vegetable oil, converting it into biofuel, and then trying to sell it. For the first few years, however, business is terrible. All the places where they can source the actual vegetable oil are a long ways away. So they wind up having to truck vegetable oil in from the Midwest, it's expensive, right? They have to truck all this stuff way out to their plant in the middle of nowhere, where they do indeed convert it into biodiesel, but then they have to, again, truck it from there to wherever the buyers are. With high expenses and low sales, profits are zero. Until Jacob Kingston devises a plan to turn the company around. He decides if he can't actually produce and sell the biofuel, He'll pretend like he is. Utah was a terrible place to make biodiesel, but as it turns out, it was a fine place to commit fraud. 
And with the right documentation, Uncle Sam will never notice a thing. Stacy Keach here, feeling greedy for more videos like this one? Then be sure to like and subscribe right here on CNBC Prime.